Although the weather outside is cold as hell, I would like to shout out all those people. I would like to shout out all those people on Reddit Winnipeg for showing us how much their pets like it outside. And give me a little reminder why I love not having pets and having to take them outside and deal with their shit. And I was able to sit inside, put my feet up, watch some football games. Actually, it's not even true. I recorded a stupid YouTube show. Welcome to Sundays with Spirit of Kenny. So I did it, and I didn't want to do it, but I did it. I had to do it. I had to start listening to local radio because I felt like I was out of touch. And I just, I was having too good of a time listening to podcasts, listening to YouTube, you know, celebrating the stuff that I was listening to. And so I turn on local radio and start listening to, you know, the music stations and this and that. And then I said, all right, we got to take the plunge. We got called out on twitter for not listening to jim toll's show i have i have no, no idea last time i thought he was uh working at tsn 1290 but they they shut that they turned t they turned tsn 1290 into a comedy radio station like <laughs> tell me that is ridiculous tell me that they have no idea how to run a radio station they turned it into a comedy radio station i haven't seen the books but i mean that can't be good I, I was trying to listen to that comedy, the TSN 12 and a funny, whatever it's called. And half of the bit must have been, or at least like 75% of the bit must have been the guy's body gestures. But he, he was literally talking about how global warming doesn't exist. So the bit is clearly from like 20 years ago when it was up for debate or just like a super ignorant time. They don't, they don't even care what these people are saying. Anyway, I digress. Yeah, so Jim Tolth, uh, I don't know, I was tweeting with Jim Tolth, or he was tweeting at me uh, during the Grey Cup. And I was like, you know what, I haven't listened to this guy's show, I really don't know too much about him, let's listen to it. And I, his show after the Super Bowl, or after the Grey Cup, I thought it was going to be like a celebration of sports. Sports is something you're supposed to celebrate, it's a great thing, and it wasn't. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm not here to talk about how disappointed I am in, in his show. But he's a fan favorite, according to lo- the local media. Anyway. I heard it on another station. Just everyone was talking about food. I, it feels like if you're a DJ, your radio personality, and you really don't have a personality to speak of, you're just going to talk about food. You'll be like, I like food. And then you'll be like, hey, do you like food? And the other guy's like, yeah, I like food too. Let's go eat some food. Yeah, let's eat some food, which is all right. But that's your whole personality is you like to eat food. It isn't much of a personality because everyone enjoys, well, and then now we have to talk about, you know, 95% of people actually like eating food and then there's 5% of people that have eating or how it might be more. There probably is more, but then there's the people inside that have eating disorders that don't like to eat food, so we have to worry about them. But generally speaking, most people like to eat food. And I heard one lady, and I'm not going to say her name, because I'm sure, I'm sure she's just trying to figure things. She's new. She moved. I mean, you can guys can figure out this out. You guys can play the detective radio game with me. She was at Power 97. You know, she's at Afternoons at City. And she just made a comment like, like, I like chips. I like double crunch chips. And I was just like, this is a radio segment? This is what it's come to? Like, I know we're all trying to find that commonality and we're not trying to push things too far right now because everyone's on the edge. But you can find, like, she had a pretty good segment where she started off about a news article about how someone found a, a Cheetos or, or some sort of snack food that was shaped by the Loch Ness Monster. And she made the very basic joke about how no one really knows what Loch Ness Monster looks like. So how could they say this this snack food looks like the... It was like a Cheeto or something like that. It looks like the Loch Ness Monster. Well, I mean, that's just the same. Everyone knows what the Loch Ness Monster looks like. Like everyone knows what Bigfoot looks like. It's just the idea of the creature in the, in the, in the loch or in the woods like everyone knows what gray aliens look like you know you don't have to be like oh everyone knows what jesus looks like well we think we know right we have a commonality of what we think these things look like but then at the end of the segment she's like i like chips i like double crunch chips i was like holy cow (laughs) everyone everyone likes chips like that's something 
that's something a five-year-old says to you at a birthday party. They come running up to you and they're like, you have a birthday party? And they're like, yeah, birthday parties are awesome. I like swimming in the pool and I like eating pies and I like eating cakes and meow, juice. It's like the first time they've had juice in the public setting and they're just running around like crazy maniacs and they're like, I got a secret for you, uncle. And you're like, oh, what's the secret? They're like, I like potato chips. And they go running off laughing. Hee 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 hee. <laughs> that's, that's what that segment was like. It was ridiculous. <sighs> so yeah. You wonder why I'm back. Because <laughs> I, I like chips too. <laughs> and like, I get it. I get it. It's hard to find commonality in this world. But no one's going like, oh, I sure do like breathing. I had the sweetest breath of fresh air when I went outside. It was wonderful. This is like the basic commonality. You could have left it at the Loxus Monster Chip. That was informative and that was that. But you have to like, ah, oh, I like chips. And maybe it's your thing. Hey, you know what? If that food is your thing, you're like the chip person. You're like, oh, I like these chips. I've had these chips. And you know, you get sponsored by two different chip companies and you're bringing chips up all the time and you're able to relate different chips to different situations and you're like oh the first time i had this chip was at this place it was fantastic i had this type of dip with it you know if you're always bringing up chips and it's your thing all right that's cool that's your personality but if it's just like a one-time segment like i like potato chips yeehaw you know <laughs> it's pretty it was pretty shocking but i do like chips This episode of Sunday with Spirit of Cane is brought to you by bananas. That's right, bananas. They are a healthy source of fiber, potassium, vitamin B6, vitamin C. Help keep the potassium deficiency away. Have a banana today. And here's a little pro tip for all you banana fans out there in this colder weather. After you buy your bananas from the Superstore, jam it under your armpit in your coat until you get home. Then open it up and you would have saved your banana's health by one or two days. Turn that banana on its side. Smile away. This is Sundays with Spirit of Kenny. I'm Spirit of Kenny. I want to thank you all for listening to this fine and wonderful show. We got lots of things to talk about. It was a crazy week, a crazy year. 2021 is done. 2022 has started. Not much different than 2021. It's funny how it is. It's funny the older you get, you realize it's just another day. No one really did anything. No one really wanted to do anything. We're just tired of everything. Got a lot of a lot of bad things happened last week. John Madden passed away. Betty White passed away, shockingly. This has always been the part of the year where you hear about Betty White's name popping up on social media. And it's because she had her birthday. But every time you always got fooled, you're like, man, Betty White popped up in the news. Oh, she's dead. No, every time her name is trending in the news, you're like, oh, she passed away. This time it really happened, really shockingly. But I'm sure she's resting in peace with John Madden and all those other good people, all those other angels that are going to heaven. So that's the bad news. The good news this week, the good news this week, Jazine, Jizlang, Gizlang, Maxwell, however you pronounce her name, convicted, guilty, which is good. This is one of those things where, who the, who cares how her name is pronounced? She's a human monster. She's a human monster, which from the Witcher we realize is the worst type of monster. A human monster. Who the hell cares how you pronounce her name? She's a horrible person that deserves all the fates that are handed out to her. Every time she stubs her toe, every time she falls down the stairs, every time she gets a hangnail, every little thing that bothers her that happens to her is justified. That's karma working out. World Juniors got canceled too this week. It's weird. It's weird to see the World Juniors being canceled. And also in the States, they're playing all the bowls, it seems like. I watched the Fiesta Bowl yesterday afternoon. Wonderful bowl. Rose Bowl. Just great times. Great great sporting events but it's so weird to see them proceeding like there's nothing going on there's no pandemic let's just have the bulls let's just put everyone together in a big bowl cough sneeze spit chew who cares go out there and enjoy the game but here in canada we're like whoa, whoa. we're trying to be responsible we don't want these kids to get sick you know the World Juniors is like the biggest event this time of year in Canada. Everyone watches it, everyone talks about it. Even people that don't enjoy hockey, like me, 
I get into it. I like being cast, I was like, oh, that's kind of disappointing, but... Safety first in this day and age. Safety first. This is Sundays with Spirit of Kenny. Thanks for joining me. You are listening to Sundays with Spirit of Kenny. And this is, of course, the only program that is recommended by four out of five Sasquatch. That one Sasquatch that doesn't like the show? That's the asshole that keeps stealing the kids' lunches. So, like most things in 2021... Bus fares are going up, not by that much, by like a nickel. I think it's going from like 305 to 310 for an adult. So I guess that's me. And uh, from 255 to 260 for your senior year child tickets. You know, I remember when three dollars. This is like an old man. <laughs> Just like, that's how old I am. I can remember when three dollars would buy you a matinee at Saint Patel. Oh, I got a great old man story coming up in the next segment. It's a classic get off my lawn scenario. That's just so good. Bus fares are going up, so they're literally nickeling diming you to death. Another nickel here, another nickel there. But they will be, now get this, they will be accepting the 2021 uh, tickets until about March. So, if you want to screw the city, you just know how. Just if you have a stockpile of those 2021 tickets, just keep using those. You don't need to throw in that extra nickel. There you go. I just little give it to them. So meanwhile, well, the city of Winnipeg announces increased bus fares. MPI announces that it will be mailing out rebate checks to everyone who drives a car in the city. So this goes to show you how there's like really a couple of different tiers of people that live in the city. There's the people that take the bus, there's people that walk, take the bus, the public transportation, and then there's the people that drive. So the, the mail-out rebate checks will be about $328 per person and should be coming up in February, mid-February, just in time for the Super Bowl party of your life. $328 worth of Budweiser, Not Bud Light, this calls for a Bud Light. So we can see where all the money is at in Manitoba, MPI, third rebate in like a couple years, and no one's taking the bus. But the bus is a hard sell in the city. Get this. It is cold outside. No shit. It is hard to walk. You're waiting. Buses can break down. That's more waiting. Taking a bus... And, and like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but taking a bus is dangerous. They're, they have signs and advertisements all over the place about how you can't assault your bus driver because it's against the law and you can't assault fellow passengers because that is against the law. This is a problem that we have in Winnipeg. It's like, are the buses working in this city? No. Does anyone want to take them? No. Why? Because they're violent places. Why would you subject yourself to A, walking, waiting, waiting, walking, and then, oh, you might get stabbed or maybe you won't get stabbed. Maybe this is the time you don't get stabbed. Oh, I just heard about that guy. That security guy got, got strapped with a drill bit. Jesus Christ. Winnipeg's a rough place, man. So, rather than risk your life every day and wait, just, you know what? The worst part about transit is that you have to wait to risk your life every day. If you could just hop out, risk your, am I going to get stabbed today? No? All right, good. Get on with your day. I guess if you're looking for that little bit of excitement, you take the bus. But if you're not looking for that a little bit of excitement, you'd rather drive a car. You're going to get like the poorest, most pop car you can get. It's going to be full carbon monoxide, barely past the safety, brakes don't work. But you would rather eat ramen noodles and drink Red Rain, if you can find Red Rain, I don't think you can find Red Rain anymore, than take the bus. You'd rather be car poor and MPI poor because you got to pay like over $500 a month for your MPI insurance probably your car payment too but you rather do that than take the bus and that makes sense no one wants to risk their life every day no one should have to risk their life every day taking the bus it should be a safe place forever but it's not Winnipeg also announced an end to the one hour free parking downtown of course I just barely heard about this one hour free parking downtown because no one's going downtown and now they're taking it away so the city on one hand is saying how hard it is to attract people to downtown Winnipeg. Well, we see why. 
There's literally no support from the government. There's no support from the city of Winnipeg. Hey, a little bit of free parking. Listen, people have ruined two to three hundred dollar nights out because they couldn't find free parking. And that's not a lie. People have gone up and down streets. Oh, there's no free parking here? Well, I'm going to go home. Screw this. <laughs> I'm not going to go out with these people. I don't like them and I don't need to see them. This is Winnipeg. We love free parking. COVID has shut down between, what, 37 and 47 businesses in downtown Winnipeg, and you're getting rid of the free parking now? It's just nuts. You need to do everything you can to save downtown. And it's not some stupid voucher book. It's a, it's a real thing. Parking for Winnipegers is a huge thing. Because clearly, you can tell by how much money MPI has, more people are taking the cars, and they're driving it safer too. That's another thing. If they have all this money they're giving back, people are driving safer too. So... It just is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dumb thing that the city is not recognizing that you need to have people with cars come downtown and give them free parking. No one's taking transit. People don't even want to take transit to the bomber games, and that's like a party thing. But at least we're not as bad as Quebec. Quebec is not so. Did you hear about? Of course you hear about this. Quebec introduced a curfew on New Year's Eve to try to curb. Uh, the massive exploding stats of the COVID uh, spreading pandemic in Quebec. They announced the curfew from uh, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. So in Quebec, the people think COVID can tell time. This is a ridiculous thing because the virus spreads no matter day or night. It doesn't give a heck. It doesn't give a fuck about when it's spreading. A uh, quote from the Global News story says, Civil liberties advocates point it to just how extreme a decision it is to limit citizens' freedom of movement. This is a fundamental right in a democratic province or a democratic country like Canada. It really is worrying for us. Of course it is. And why don't curfews work against viruses like COVID? Now let's just break this down. Our goal during a pandemic is to stop the spread of the virus, but we can't stop it. We need to slow it down. Now we need to realize that in Canada, People are choosing not to get vaccinated. That's their decision. And, you know, whatever decision you make with your vaccination status, just follow the guidelines for your vaccination status. I like getting vaccinated. I wish I could have five or six vaccinations with me at all times. I wish I could get like, two of each one, you know, two Moderna, two Pfizer, you know. But you can't take, <laughs> you can't take vaccinations away from other people. It's the wrong thing to do. Get vaccinated. Or don't. But if you don't, don't make a big deal out of it and follow the guidelines. Now, we want to stop the spread of the virus, but we can't. We need to slow it down, right? Until we all build up herd immunity or we all get vaccinated or anything like this. Since everyone has their own little uh, justification for what they're doing, we're just going to have to move on and realize that not everyone can get vaccinated. Therefore, we can't completely el eliminate COVID from Canada. It's not like polio, where we can completely eliminate uh, polio from Canada because everyone's getting vaccinated. And the proof that vaccines work is that there are no polio uh, people. There's no polio outbreak here in Canada, but there is in places of the world where they don't have the polio vaccine. But since we can't, we need to just slow the transmission of the virus down. So how do you do that? You do it by, you know, what we've been doing, sanitizing, cleaning, when people said, like, wash your hands and clean your hands after going to the washroom uh, at first when this pandemic first broke out, I'm like, people aren't doing that. You're supposed to do that all the time. Wearing a mask, it's new, but it works. Ever since I started wearing the mask, I haven't been sick. Ever since they've been sanitized and cleaning everything, I haven't been sick. So it does stop the spread of viruses. But we need to also spread out people too. Six feet social distancing. This is the hard thing to do, right? Because it is a ridiculous thing to stand six feet away from someone and try to have a conversation with them. Especially when they're wearing a mask. There's a lot lost, a lot lost in, that, that, uh, in that context. But it's just what they suggested, right? So this is how we slow things down. Is we try to spread people out. So when we spread things out, we slow down the spread of the virus. Right? Because it's not getting in people's systems. Uh, you know, the spray or the spit that's being released from people's mouths or whatever isn't going into the other person, right? That's why you guys sound so far away. So, here's... Now, now the city, this province, introduces a curfew, which limits the amount of time people are out. Now, so let's say they limit the curfew 
from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's eight hours to go shopping. Now, you have a thousand people in this population that need to go shopping. That means that, you know, a thousand divided by eight, that's 125 people per hour that need to go shopping at the grocery store. But if you extend the shopping hours from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., it's pretty reasonable. That's 16 hours worth of shopping. That means you cut it in half, and you have 62.5 people per hour going through that store. Now, that's way less people going through the store. It's still the same amount of people, but because the time has been extended by double, half the people go through, literally cut it in half. Curfews don't work because they limit the amount of people they limit the amount of hours, increasing the amount of people that are rushing into that store. Not to mention the people that are lining up outside that store. So we need to extend uh, shopping hours to make things better, to slow the spread for everyone. Especially when we're clean. Like 62 people coming into a store and being able to clean up after that is way different than 125 people going through the store and trying to clean up after that. And, and, and I know this is counterintuitive to extend shopping hours and everything like that but when you actually think about it when you do the numbers and you look at it you go oh yeah it makes sense we're having less people in contact in close contact with other shopping for goods and we know that people need to eat right people have to eat whether it's bananas or double crunch chips man we got to get our chips right it's the most important thing in the world Feel tired? You have muscle spasms, weakness, cramping, a regular heartbeat, constipation, nausea, or vomiting? You could have a potassium deficiency, and you can cure that with bananas. That's that's right, delicious bananas. Just turn that banana on its side and have a smile a day to keep the potassium deficiency away. Bananas, mm -mm, bananas. been an interesting week for politics here in the Great Prairie here in Manitoba. Ron Schuler was removed from office. We all sort of saw this coming. Uh, this is right out of the Manitoba Post story. Nice, short, and sweet. Ron Schuler is no longer a Manitoba cabinet minister. Uh, statement, Premier Heather Seven thanked Ruth Schuler for his years of service as Infrastructure and Emergency Measures Minister and replaced him with Reg Hewall, who is already Central Service Minister. Uh, Schuler was in the spotlight recently for refusing to disclose his vaccinated sash. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Stephenson said there'll be a cabinet shuffle early this new year. So you're saying that the very week that Ron Schuler was out as minister, water mains break, shutting down COVID testing sites in Winnipeg. Hmm. You no, know, in a very super villain move, he tweeted. Liberty has a price to pay. Today I paid for mine. This is very like super villain. You no, know, you can tell you can tell when people actually they're living in their own movie because they tweet things like this. Of course, this shows how fractionized the uh, PC party is. But also, this this story too. This story is pretty interesting. Uh, new elections Manitoba finding shows a former progressive conservative executive, Ken Lee had only one person donate to his short-lived campaign to become the party's next leader himself. So he donated to his own campaign. This is something I completely understand. Donating to yourself. The story is from the CBC. Now, apparently Lee donated $3,000 to his own campaign, according to the independent auditor. Uh, he mainly used the money for advertising, signs, and office supplies. I, I don't recall seeing signs for Ken Lee, but hey, I'm not a PC member. Uh, this all seems pretty reasonable, like pens and paper and signs. I don't know what the big deal is, is in this story. The party did not allow him to appear on the ballot in the race, eventually won by Heather Sepson, because they would not elaborate on why they denied his spot. So that's pretty interesting. Doesn't seem quite right, you know. This guy had everything he needed to be on the ballot and denied him a spot on the ballot. Uh, you think that this guy would have more of a... You'd think that Ken Lee would more ha would have more of a right to protest the outcome of the actual election than the other person did, but hey, this is Manitoba, this is choice. 
Uh, the charter accountant and a former chief financial officer for the PC party ran on a platform that include oppositions to the vaccine mandates. Oh, uh, and to enter businesses and work in the government jobs. Okay, uh, this makes sense. They don't want any anti-vaxxers in the PC party. This is very clear. They got rid of Ron Schuler. They got rid of Kang Lee. They definitely don't want any anti-vaxxers at all in the provincial conservative party, and that's their right to do that. But it's going to show you the fractionization of the PC party, and almost guaranteed it will be a bigger deal come election time, next election. And yeah, you're going to see people like this peeling out of the party and going to what the Manitoba party, which was a lame thing last time. Super great conservative party. I hope not, but I hope people come to their senses. I don't think so, though. Uh, but. I can't really complain about anything Kenny Lee did. Like, I don't agree with his politics. I'm a huge vaxxer. Get vaccinated. Or if you don't get, or if you can't get vaccinated, just follow the guidelines, right? That's what we've been saying this whole show. Follow the guidelines. It's going to be one of the campaigns we uh, speak of going from here to the end of the earth or to whenever the pandemic, pandemic's over. Just follow the guidelines. Whatever your status is, follow the guidelines. Kenny Lee said, like, hey, I have my own point of view. I'm going to fund my own campaign. And... Uh, going to try to be uh, the leader of the PC party. Unfortunately, that does not work for him. Who knows how many people would have voted for him. No one donated to him. But he's done more than most people. Most people don't even run for office. They just complain about it. They just bitch and bitch and bitch about it. You know? They throw on the microphone and they start bitching about it. This article is... This is, this is also like... You know, we're growing up. We're growing up in such a weird way. Uh in the world nowadays there's no people having fun that's why we're trying to bring this show back I'm trying to bring the show back trying to have a little bit of fun with this stuff but this is not a fun story this is like one of those things where you need to sit there and go alright people you've gone too far this is also from the CBC Manitoba eyes security changes as threats to politicians appears on the rise now people just fucking cool it we don't need to be so high and mighty that we need to attack people we need to threaten people in their homes that's disgusting. You need to make your shit work without threatening people. If you can't figure out how to be a non-threatening person, why? Well, we're going to go on the list. <laughs> See, it's so stupid. It doesn't work. If I threaten you, you're not going to listen to me. You're going to be like, ah, oh, this guy is threatening me. He's an idiot. I'm not threatening you. It's an example of what they do. Just think about that. The story goes on. In Manitoba, some changes have been made and no more are being proposed to try to ensure serving the public office doesn't mean putting one person's uh, safety at risk. Now, we here, of course, we talked about earlier how dangerous transit is. We're not, we're used to being in danger. I shouldn't go after people in their homes. It's wrong. Social media has tended to change the discourse around life and politics, and so I think this has been a growing concern for a while. Heightened. I think perhaps by the pandemic, but not specifically because of it. Uh, Ken Gorzin, a veteran member of the Manitoba Legislative, who serves as Minister of Legislation and Public Affairs, said in an interview, Absolutely, social media has changed the goddamn world. No true words have been spoken. When something goes out there on social media, it's like opening up Pandora's box and just going into the wind. It's everywhere. You can't get it back. It's like a genie in the bottle. You can't get it back in there. The opposition New Democrats Party have put forward a private member's bill in the legislative that would establish buffer zones around hospitals, schools, daycares, and homes of many kinds of healthcare workers. Now this this is just complete. It's sad that we need to make a law to to stop people from protesting. Like schools, hospitals, these are where vulnerable people are. The people going in and out of hospitals. Not only are the workers there, but their family members are dying in there. There's a lot of stress going on there. We don't need protests going around there. Schools, too? It's hard to be a kid nowadays. we got to worry about school shootings and crazy people protesting their schools. It just doesn't even make sense. People, go home, you know. This is a great idea. We need to keep these... We need to keep emotionally charged people away from hospitals and schools. There's no reason for people to protest hospitals and schools. If you have ideas to help change or make schools better or hospitals better, do it by running for office like Kenny Lee did. I mean, he was wrong. You'll probably be wrong too, but maybe you're right. Maybe you have a great idea how to make things better, but no one can hear you because you're acting like a crazy person in front of a school with our children's that. Doesn't gotta, you gotta be a little bit smarter than that. Take that step back and go, oh, is this idea valid? Now, the story even talks about the Grinch of Manitoba. Yes, 
Brian Pallister. The 9,000 square foot mansion that had been in the public spotlight in 2012 when some local media outlets reported on Pallister purchasing a $2 million property. The number of protesters outside the property increased during the pandemic. At one time, people could be seen on the pre-wears driveway. A security car, a secure car, began to be stationed on the site in 2001. A large fence was erected around the perimeter. Well, there you go. I hope it was put up there by Manitobans. I hope he bought in Canada when he made that fence. <laughs> I mean, there's the joke, right? Oh. Pre uh, Brian Palliser found the solution of a wall. And then it's... Alright. So we're just going to talk about the death risk. Death risks just don't even make any sense. It's just an awful waste of time. An awful waste of emotional energy. There are better ways to get people to hear you. Violence and threats do not work. Maybe in the short term, like when you're close, but in the long term, and in things that matter, they won't work. Because you can't disagree. You can't agree on something in a non-violent way. It, it won't work. No one will agree with you when you get violent. No one goes, oh, they don't make a lot of sense after you punch me in the head, after you threaten my child. It makes a lot of sense. No, it tends to make people angry. And nowadays, with how crazy things are, with how emotionally charged the world is, we need to sit down, take a breath, and say, oh, maybe there's better ways that I can communicate my ideas. How do I express this properly? Maybe writing a letter, but who the fuck writes a letter? We need to remember that we're all in this together. That we're all just trying to take a breath of fresh air, get relaxed, and try to make the world a better place. You know, we're all just trying to get to the end of our day so we can enjoy a bag of double crunch chips or something of this nature. Let's just work together. Mm -mm, bananas. It says I would fight a monkey for a banana, but I, I don't think I would. I think a monkey would rip my face off. So, uh, I wouldn't fight a monkey for a banana, but I would buy a banana from the store. Mm -mm, banana, just turn that banana on its side, and a banana smile a day will help keep the potassium deficiency away. No monkey fighting. Ban <laughs> bananas. Mm -mm, bananas. This is a lot of work for just 12 bananas. Right on, we got through the quagmire stuff that I wanted to work through, and now we can have a little bit of fun. There's some stories that I saw this week that were... Oh, I thought they were uh, fun. This is from Portage Online. Now, Portage Golf Club urges you to keep off-road vehicles off trails. That's right. The Portage Golf Club is reminding citizens that the trails on the course are not for off-road vehicles. Yes, this is the story that I hinted at earlier. The ultimate get off my lawn story. Now we've all yelled at people before for throwing garbage out where they shouldn't or maybe that was just me and this is why I love this story. Porter's, Porter's Golf Club is like the old man yelling at young people get off my lawn this is my lawn with a very valid point it is really hard to maintain a golf course in Manitoba I'm sure it is but I saw this story and it just made me laugh. I'm like I sympathize 100% with the golf course. And most people nowadays would probably be, all these young kids out there would be like, hey man, I just want to send it across the golf course, you know? Living my dream. What am I supposed to do with the ATV? I can't hook up with no one. I gotta drive around. I love it. I love that story. This is, this is also another story from Porters Online. Carbon Water Tower to be turned into local landmark. Yes, that's right. They took the Carbon Water Tower down, I guess, last week. And... I guess right at the last minute, City Council opted to keep the piece of the tower that was intended for eventual display as a historic site or landmark. Yes, that's right. Instead of throwing out the water tower, which they should have done, you know, Carmen is showing some signs of emotional uh, hoarding. Uh, they decided to keep the top of the water tower and turn it into a historical site. And this just reminds me of that project that someone has in, you know, their garage or uh, backspace where they say, oh, I'm going to get to it, I'm going to get to it. You know, like I have I have all the paints that I need lined up that I just want to paint it and do an anti-rust coat and then it'll be good to go. You know, they said uh, what they're going to do with it. 
Uh, Owen explained that the water tower was dismantled in such a way that we can stand on four short legs, and that's what led to the council's decision. Uh, we can put it somewhere. We can paint it. We can do whatever we want with it now. All right. You know what, Carmen? I'm going to check in on you in a year. And if you haven't done anything that water tower, you have to throw it out. There's nothing worse than just having all those projects. You're like, oh, you know, I'm going to be a... <laughs> like a, a Warhammer 40,000 person and you start painting all the figurines and then you realize you don't have anyone to play with. Such is my life. Well, now it is the time of the show. It is the fun size Mr. Big Candy Bar Award for the show. And that's right. That's where we just pick a story that we think is a little bit of fun. Your Christmas tree can make a hungry goat do a little happy dance. Oh, this is that nice. Uh, farmers say Christmas trees are good for the animal's digestive system. That's right. So if you had a Christmas tree this year, a real Christmas tree, and you were guilty because you had a Christmas tree, just give it to some goats, and they apparently love it. Uh, the, as the holidays have come and gone, the Christmas trees start to drop their needles. Ontario farmers are getting crafty and upcycling Christmas trees. Upcycling? I ain't never done heard upcycling before, and for farmers to use it? Golly, I feel dumb. They say that the evergreens become a tasty treat for the livestock once they've outlived their lifespan in our living rooms. I guess they're talking about the Christmas trees at this point. Uh, but both Top Market Meats and ours, the Rodriguez Farms in Airy, feed discarded evergreens to their goats. It's good for their digestive system, says Leslie Zinger of Top Market Meats. The acidity in the pine is a good natural cleaner. <laughs> it's it's kind of like humans with fiber. Oh, this is good. I want. I wonder, uh, do the goats taste any different that have been eating the pine trees? Hmm. All right. Anyway, that has been your fun size Mr. Big candy bar story for this week. I want to thank you all for listening. It's been fun to be back in the saddle again to, to touch the knobs, to read the stories. There's so much things that I didn't want to get, that I want to get to you, that we didn't get to. So hopefully next time uh, we'll be able to cruise through some more things. And, oh yeah. No, I know. I know uh, I know. I missed one of the, one of the uh, topics that I usually covered. Russia. Russia's up to something, you know? They've always been up to something. Russia, China. Well, keep, keep an eye on these things still, too. All right. Have a good week. Peace and love to everybody. Thanks for listening. And we'll be back 